Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about cells again. One of the most important things in our whole body because our whole body is made of cells. Now, what we're going to be talking about is how they work. I'm going to go briefly over what I covered last week and I did something a little different. <coughs> I wrote everything backwards. Hi everybody. I wrote everything backwards on the paper so you could read it. <laughs> and that's what I spent most of my day doing today. Not an easy task. But we have a cell. So what creates a cell? We're going to kind of breeze through the beginning of this. Uh, you can go back on the uh, Facebook or go to YouTube to my channel on YouTube it's under Gary Parent and you will find that video so that's why we're going to skip through this but I want to make sure as we bring things up to date that we have a seed and a womb that's what creates a cell and of course with every cell in all life every cell in all life it has to have a blueprint and that blueprint is the gene and the DNA and we're going to get into more about the gene and the DNA later on here so the next thing that we're going to need which I kind of left off with the gene and the DNA the last time so the next thing that we need, because we have a seed, a womb, a blueprint, the gene, and the DNA, we need hydration and nutrition. Without high, proper hydration and proper nutrition, the cells start to lose their energy. And the final thing that we need is oxygen and temperature. We have to maintain proper oxygen, temperature, nutrition, and hydration for that cell to thrive. This is so much of what's wrong with almost everybody is we are experiencing chronic acidosis and it is heading towards degenerative and that's why so many people are having so many issues and they're uh, losing their energy because the cells can't function properly. So what do all those have in common? All the, uh, the seed, the womb, the nutrition, the hydration, the oxygen and the temperature. What does that create? It creates an environment. And that environment is being messed up. And what's it being messed up by? Science. Because science is creating all the things that we are exploring and they're making plastics and they're making all these different things to make our life wonderful. But if you want to know what's inside your body, all you have to do is look at the surface of the earth. The earth is the largest cell that we know of in the universe. And the crust of the earth lives inside us because we are cells of the universe. And we really need to start taking care of the earth. And in doing so, we will be taking care of ourselves. And we don't need science to do that. All we need to do is realize that our environment is controlled really by us. We are far bigger than science ever thought of being. So it's in the soil and it's in, in the, the soil will take care of the plants with minerals and hydration and obviously temperature and oxygen all that stuff goes in and it comes out in this perfect little fruit berry melon vegetables all cells all ready to give us life and we've gotten so far away from that that we've forgotten so what happens when you get the environment right 
your energy increases. What kind of energy? Cellular energy. Now, <clears throat> as we are experiencing dehydration through our industrialized, synthesized, homogenized, pasteurized diet, we are slowly dying of thirst. I don't know how many of you have ever been out on, uh, gone out at night and you're drinking and you get up the next morning and you feel like you got hit by a truck. Well, that's making that happen in a few hours, what's going on in your body over years. And I just want to say hi to everybody and please comment below where you're from, uh, maybe what uh, you're getting from these videos. Uh, make sure to visit the other ones and, and make sure to hit that love button because I love each and every one of you too. And I have a couple of demonstrations here. I'll try to at least have one to give you a visual of what's going on in our body. So there's a lot of bloating and, and a lot of things that are, that are going on because of bad food combinations or your stomach is acidic or it's alkal. It could be too alkal and it can't process everything properly. So I'm going to, uh, pardon me, I'm going to step off camera here for a second. This is alkaline. It's baking soda. And let's pretend that this is an interstitial nest for our cell to set in. So there it is, because that interstitial pathway is the gate for the nutrition and oxygen to come up to the blood, and it wants to be in an alkaline state. Now, how does it stay in an alkaline state? Because it's eating, digesting, and eliminating so it's pooping inside this dish. So this little petri dish right here, that's what's happening. So the lymphatic system comes up through that interstitial pathway too, and it cleans up that pee and poop and pulls it out of there. So it's living in an alkaline environment. Now, when we are dehydrated and we are not getting the nutrients we need, the movement that we need because our lymphatic system doesn't have a pump like our blood does. So 80% of the manual pump that helps the lymphatic system move is the balls of our feet. That's why walking is so good for you. As you're walking, right, you're moving your lymph system. As you move your arms and things, that's why exercise is so good for us. And you don't have to be strenuous, just a, just a nice walk. Go out, walk in the woods, listen to nature, watch nature. Feel that breeze on your skin. Feel the environment you're in. Watch the squirrels and the birds. And, and it's amazing what you will learn from watching them. So we have an alkaline situation that this cell is sitting in. Okay? And what we're going to do is... We're going to introduce some acid and what we're going to use for acid is pasteurized, not live, vinegar. And this is what's happening. It doesn't matter what the acid is, as long as you're alkaline and you're mixing acid or your acid and you're mixing alkaline, this is why food combination is so important, this is what's happening inside your body. Pretty cool, huh? That's why you're getting gassy, bloated, all these different things. You got putrefaction in there. There's so many things going on. That cell is sitting in that environment and is getting burned. So it's very important to make sure that you stay hydrated that you get the nutrients that you need. Let me put this down before I dip it over. Okay, 
So that's why it's so important to keep our body in a more alkaline state to stay truly hydrated with live liquids. And I've gone over this many times in my videos. I'll probably go over it many more times. Live liquids are things like coconut water from a green coconut. You can get live at a store, but you have to be careful because a lot of that is pasteurized or it's from concentrate, which what happens is they boil all of the water and stuff out of it and they send it in a really dense uh, liquid and then they put water in it to rehydrate it and in the process they kind of kill the live part of it. So kombucha, uh, the master cleanse, even having lemon water, that's a nice live liquid. There, there are so many out there, it's, it's incredible. Green smoothies, juices that you make at home, those are all live liquids and they're amazing for your body on a cellular level and what they create is energy. As we get dehydrated, we get sticky and we get inflamed. Inflammation, that's what the acid is causing. And it's restricting the flow of everything in the body. And that's what we don't want. That's how we get sick. All we really need to do, this is so simple, it's incredible. Start putting live foods and live liquids in our life. Start slow. Many people start and they're like, they just want to get it over with. This is a lifetime thing. Okay? You don't shower today and then shower again next year. You can't, I mean, you can do that, yes. But there's people are going to avoid you, right? You're going to start collecting the wrong crowd, and the crowd that you might want to be around is going to start going away. Same thing is going on inside your body. As your body gets acidic, condensed, and, and sticky, all of a sudden, yeast, mold, fungus, parasites, all these different elements that you don't want in your body start to grow, and they start to take over the strength of your body. And it takes so much energy from your body to deal with these and to deal with that acid that I just showed you, that you don't have enough to run your body. I don't know how many of you have ever eaten like at Thanksgiving or, or just a big meal, heavy meal, and you fall asleep. Or you, you're at, uh, you could go to a, a cafe or a bar and you see somebody having a few beers and they start to get tired. That's the body using the energy that would normally run your body, it has to send it in. You're forcing it to go in and work with that to deal with it. And it's taking so much energy, there's none left for you. But as you rebuild, rehydrate, uh, get oxygen and nutrition in your body, it will come back to life. It doesn't have a choice, it has to. As your body gets stronger, it will eliminate the weakness every single time. The discipline of doing that is the issue. So if it's important to cleanse the external body every day or so, it's important to cleanse the internal body every day or so because the stink that you're washing off is coming from the inside through your 13 channels of elimination. That's why we clean our ears. You know, when we cry, that's why we wipe away the tears. That's salt water. Our uh, lungs and, and our skin is our third kidney. It's the largest eliminative organ in the body. Uh, urine, stool, all these different things are all eliminative organs. And the body needs those to work properly for you to generate energy. And as they get congested, all of a sudden, it can't produce an, enough energy anymore. That's why you get tired. The simple solution, proper hydration, nutrition, and movement. 
Now I'm going to grab one more thing here because, see, we have two forms of energy in our body. We have quantum energy in our body, and we have an energy that demands that it be fed to maintain physical energy. So what I have here is two magnets, okay? You can see they stick together. But when you flip it, it pushes apart. Everything about us is this right here. This is what our bones are. Our bones hold quantum energy. Now I'm recording this on a cell phone. And what is a cell phone? It's a crystal and a battery. Well, we eat food to gain energy. When we eat properly, that's what we're doing. We're replacing, gaining, and burning energy. We are a crystal also, and that crystal compounds are in our bones. And that is how... Uh, we communicate through the ethers, just like the cell phone. The cell phone is actually just a mini us when it comes to the electronics part. So, remember, we are quantum energy. And what's so powerful about this, you could take this and set it on a table for ten generations. It hasn't eaten anything. It hasn't done anything. We don't have to tend it, nothing. And guess what? It's going to have the exact same energy that it does right now. That's how powerful quantum energy is. Another thing is quantum energy, and I was thinking about this today. Okay, gravity is quantum energy. So is the electromagnetic field. Now is gravity and the electromagnetic field the same? I don't... I don't think there's any answer to that. You know, it's funny that uh, science can split an atom. And they're building a facility. Actually, I think it's already built. It's seven times bigger than the one that they had. And what they're trying to do is crash an atom to create black matter. Hoping, get this now, hoping that they can create black holes in outer space. Now what do you think that's going to do to the environment? When we look inside and we have leaky gut, what have we done? We've created a black hole or a hole in our gut floor. And all of a sudden the acids are leaking out, getting into the system. Well, you poke a black hole in the universe, Something's going to get out or in because it's energy. That's all it is. It's a magnet. Everything has an electromagnetic field and it's all one source energy. You could set a nuclear bomb off, which has happened many times. There won't even be a ripple in the quantum field. That's how powerful quantum field is. Man-made energy, a good wind will knock the power out. When we look at that and we think of our body and we're eating the wrong foods, that's like that wind coming in and it's knocking the energy out of our body. So we have to learn how to take care of that. And taking care of it is very simple. Proper hydration, proper nutrition, and movement to keep that lymphatic system going. Now, we can also do that through herbs, because herbs are organ and gland specific. So they help reduce the inflammation in the body, to loosen it up. And you hear a lot of people saying, well, you know, I just can't get rid of this spot over here, or, or you know, I have cellulite on my legs. That's just weak tissue in the body. The, through yo-yo dieting and bad diet, the fat cells actually expand and there's a, a skin layer over the top of that and it starts to dip and that's how you get that look. Well, with proper nutrition, 
hydration and movement, and it'll take probably one or two years, but that can go away. But it needs to so it needs to liquefy it to get it to move. So there are times when it's going to look worse as you're going through this, and then people kind of blame the detox. Well, it's not the detox. It's the process the body has to go through to eliminate. We get vitamin D from the sun. That's a source of energy. And we really need to be in the sun. No sunblock. Use organic um, coconut oil and put it on you. Make sure you clean your skin first. Put the organic coconut oil, go out in the sun. I don't care if you can only be there for 10 seconds. As time goes by, you'll be able to be there longer and longer. And of course, there is a maximum for everybody. You know, I can only be out maybe four or five hours without getting burned. So, all these little things, all these little steps that we've been told not to do. Oh, you can't go out in the sun, that causes skin cancer. Oh, you can't have salt that... Uh, messes up your system. I was talking to somebody the other day about salt licks. You know, we used to go out in the field with the cows, because I grew up around farms. So we used to go out in the field with the cows and lick the salt licks with them. <laughs> and, and you know what? I never heard of a cow getting sick from licking a salt lick. Because they have an innate ability to understand when their body needs salt. They have an innate ability to understand when they need to eat a specific herb because they're having issues. All wildlife does. The only ones that have lost it is us. We're touted as being extremely smart because we can, and, and we can do many things, okay? Like build skyscrapers and all this stuff. You know, where does a squirrel get his blueprints? How many tools do they have to build their little nest up in the trees? Or a bird? They have nothing. They have a beak and feet. A squirrel has a mouth and feet. And they build these structures that go through hurricanes. And they're safe inside. That's, that's why we need to be observing nature. Nature is infinite in its wisdom. So get out in nature and watch it. Take your shoes off. Get your feet grounded to the ground. Everything in the magnetic world is based on a completing, um, completing a circuit. When I turn a light switch on and the light comes on, I've completed a circuit. Same is true for our body. We're wearing sneakers with rubber bottoms, and we don't really, we get close to the ground, and that's pretty good, but it's not like being on the ground with your bare skin. When you go up to a plant, just gently touch it. That's completing that circuit. You ground it to the ground, you touch the plant, you ask which, let's say that it was a tomato plant, right? Cherry tomatoes. You ask which cherry tomato is right for you, and it will guide you there. And when you pick it and eat it, you're completing that circuit. And all that life force energy that's in the plant, that's in the universal field, goes right into your body to feed your cells. And the longer that, the earlier it's picked, and the longer it sits on the shelf, that life force energy starts to leave. There's still nutrition there, there's still hydration there, but the life force energy. When you pick a green leafy vegetable and you watch it start to wilt, that is the life force energy leaving it. And that is nature showing us that when we start to lose our life force energy, we start to wilt. We start to bend over. We get stiff, we get tired. And it's hard for us to move. So putting that life force energy in our body is rejuvenating ourselves on a cellular level. 
and every person is as unique as their fingerprint inside every cell is unique so that's why one diet doesn't fit all we have to be explorers and go out and find the solution to rebuild our own energy so basically all of us on here that work with people we're guides but the fine-tuning is up to you so I think I'm going to draw this to a, conclu uh, to a conclusion right now I love you all and so happy that I can be doing this and hopefully you got a lot out of this uh, let me know where you're from uh, hit that like button share it with other people if you would and I hope you have a fantastic night hydrate neutrify and exercise just simple movement it's all you need just go for a walk remember the balls of your feet 80% of the lymphatic fluid how it moves through the body is through the balls of your feet again I love you all and I will see you in the next video see ya